a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Anthrax Anthrax is an infection caused by the bacterium Bacillus anthracis. It can occur in four forms, skin, lungs, intestinal, and injection. Symptoms begin between one day and two months after the infection is contracted. The skin form presents with a small blister, with surrounding swelling that often turns into a painless ulcer with a black center. The inhalation form presents with fever, chest pain, and shortness of breath. The intestinal form presents with diarrhea which may contain blood, abdominal pains, and nausea and vomiting. The injection form presents with fever and an abscess at the site of drug injection. Anthrax is spread by contact with the spores of the bacteria, which are often from infectious animal products. Contact is by breathing, eating, or through an area of broken skin. It does not typically spread directly between people. Risk factors include people who work with animals or animal products, travelers, postal workers, and military personnel. Diagnosis can be confirmed based on finding antibodies or the toxin in the blood or by culture of a sample from the infected site. Anthrax vaccination is recommended for people who are at high risk. Immunizing animals against anthrax is recommended in areas where previous infections have occurred. Two months of antibiotics, such as doxycycline or ciprofloxacin, after exposure can also prevent infection. If infection occurs treatment is with antibiotics and possibly antitoxin. The type and number of antibiotics used depends on the type of infection. Antitoxin is recommended for those with widespread infection. Anthrax among humans is most common in Africa and Central and Southern Asia. It also occurs fairly regularly in Southern Europe but is uncommon in Northern Europe and North America. Globally, at least 2,000 cases occur a year with about two cases a year in the United States. Skin infections represent more than 95% of cases. Without treatment, the risk of death from skin anthrax is 24%. For intestinal infection, the risk of death is 25-75%, to 75%, while respiratory anthrax has a mortality of 50-80%, to 80%, even with treatment. Until the 20th century, anthrax infections killed hundreds of thousands of people and animals each year. Anthrax has been developed as a weapon by a number of countries. In plant-eating animals, infection occurs when they eat or breathe in the spores while grazing. Carnivores may become infected by eating infected animals. Skin Cutaneous anthrax, also known as Hyde Porter's disease, is when anthrax occurs on the skin. It is the most common form. It is also the least dangerous form of anthrax. Cutaneous anthrax presents as a boil-like skin lesion that eventually forms an ulcer with a black center. The black eschar often shows up as a large, painless, necrotic ulcer at the site of infection. In general, cutaneous infections form within the site of spore penetration between two and five days after exposure. Unlike bruises or most other lesions, cutaneous anthrax infections normally do not cause pain. Nearby lymph nodes may become infected, reddened, swollen, and painful. A scab forms over the lesion soon and falls off in a few weeks. Complete recovery may take longer. Cutaneous anthrax is typically caused when B. Anthracized spores enter through cuts on the skin. This form is found most commonly when humans handle infected animals and or animal products. Cutaneous anthrax is rarely fatal if treated, because the infection area is limited to the skin, preventing the lethal factor, edema factor, and protective antigen from entering and destroying a vital organ. Without treatment, about 20% of cutaneous skin infection cases progress to toxemia and death. Lungs respiratory infection in humans is relatively rare and presents as two stages. It infects the lymph nodes in the chest first, rather, than the lungs themselves, a condition called hemorrhagic mediastinitis, causing bloody fluid to accumulate in the chest cavity, therefore causing shortness of breath. The first stage causes cold and flu-like symptoms. Symptoms include fever, shortness of breath, cough, fatigue, and chills. This can last hours to days. Often, many fatalities from inhalational anthrax are when the first stage is mistaken for the cold or flu and the victim does not seek treatment until the second stage, which is 90% fatal. The second stage occurs when the infection spreads. 
from the lymph nodes to the lungs. Symptoms of the second stage develop suddenly after hours or days of the first stage. Symptoms include high fever, extreme shortness of breath, shock, and rapid death within 48 hours in fatal cases. Historical mortality rates were over 85%, but when treated early, observed case fatality rate dropped to 45%. Distinguishing pulmonary anthrax from more common causes of respiratory illness is essential to avoiding delays in diagnosis and thereby improving outcomes. An algorithm for this purpose has been developed. Gastrointestinal Gastrointestinal infection is most often caused by consuming anthrax-infected meat and is characterized by diarrhea, potentially with blood. Abdominal pains, acute inflammation of the intestinal tract and loss of appetite. Occasional vomiting of blood can occur. Lesions have been found in the intestines and in the mouth and throat. After the bacterium invades the gastrointestinal system, it spreads to the bloodstream and throughout the body, while continuing to make toxins. GI infections can be treated, but usually result in fatality rates of 25% to 60%, depending upon how soon treatment commences. This form of anthrax is the rarest form bacteria. Bacillus anthracis is a rod-shaped, gram-positive, aerobic bacterium about 1 by 9 meters in size. It was shown to cause disease by Robert Koch in 1876 when he took a blood sample from an infected cow, isolated the bacteria, and put them into a mouse. The bacterium normally rests in endospore form in the soil, and can survive for decades in this state. Herbivores are often infected whilst grazing especially when eating rough, irritant, or spiky vegetation. The vegetation has been hypothesized to cause wounds within the gastrointestinal tract permitting entry of the bacterial endospores into the tissues, though this has not been proven. Once ingested or placed in an open wound, the bacteria begin multiplying inside the animal or human and typically kill the host within a few days or weeks. The endospores germinate at the site of entry into the tissues and then spread by the circulation to the lymphatics, where the bacteria multiply. The production of two powerful exotoxins and lethal toxin by the bacteria causes death. Veterinarians can often tell a possible anthrax-induced death by its sudden occurrence, and by the dark, non-clotting blood that oozes from the body orifices. Most anthrax bacteria inside the body after death are outcompeted and destroyed by anaerobic bacteria within minutes to hours post-mortem. However, anthrax vegetative bacteria that escape the body via oozing blood or through the opening of the carcass may form hardy spores. These vegetative bacteria are not contagious. One spore forms per one vegetative bacterium. The triggers for spore formation are not yet known though oxygen tension and lack of nutrients may play roles. Once formed, these spores are very hard to eradicate. The infection of herbivores by the inhalational route normally proceeds as follows. Once the spores are inhaled, they are transported through the air passages into the tiny air sacs in the lungs. The spores are then picked up by scavenger cells in the lungs and are transported through small vessels to the lymph nodes in the central chest cavity. Damage caused by the anthrax spores and bacilli to the central chest cavity can cause chest pain and difficulty in breathing. Once in the lymph nodes, the spores germinate into active bacilli that multiply and eventually burst the macrophages, releasing many more bacilli into the bloodstream to be transferred to the entire body. Once in the bloodstream, these bacilli release three proteins named lethal factor, edema factor, and protective antigen. The three are not toxic by themselves, but their combination is incredibly lethal to humans. Protective antigen combines with these other two factors to form lethal toxin and edema toxin, respectively. These toxins are the primary agents of tissue destruction, bleeding, and death of the host. If antibiotics are administered too late, even if the antibiotics eradicate the bacteria, some hosts still die of toxemia because the toxins produced by the bacilli remain in their system at lethal dose levels. Exposure The spores are able to survive in harsh conditions for decades or even centuries. Such spores can be found on all continents, including Antarctica. Disturbed grave sites of infected animals have been known to cause infection after 70 years. Occupational exposure to infected animals or their products is the usual pathway of exposure for humans. 
workers who are exposed to dead animals and animal products are at the highest risk, especially in countries where anthrax is more common. Anthrax in livestock grazing on open range where they mix with wild animals still occasionally occurs in the United States and elsewhere. Many workers who deal with wool and animal hides are routinely exposed to low levels of anthrax spores, but most exposure levels are not sufficient to develop anthrax infections. A lethal infection is reported to result from inhalation of about 10,000-20,000 spores, though this dose varies among host species. Little documented evidence is available to verify the exact or average number of spores needed for infection. Historically, inhalational anthrax was called wool sorter's disease because it was an occupational hazard for people who sorted wool. Today, this form of infection is extremely rare in advanced nations, as almost no infected animals remain. Mode of infection Anthrax can enter the human body through the intestines, lungs, or skin and causes distinct clinical symptoms based on its site of entry. In general, an infected human will be quarantined. However, anthrax does not usually spread from an infected human to a non-infected human. But, if the disease is fatal to the person's body, its mass of anthrax bacilli becomes a potential source of infection to others, and special precautions should be used to prevent further contamination. Inhalational anthrax, if left untreated until obvious symptoms occur, is usually fatal. Anthrax can be contracted in laboratory accidents or by handling infected animals their wool or their hides. It has also been used in biological warfare agents and by terrorists to intentionally infect as exemplified by the 2001 anthrax attacks. Mechanism The lethality of the anthrax disease is due to the bacterium's two principal virulence factors, the polydeglutamic acid capsule, which protects the bacterium from phagocytosis by host neutrophils, and the tripartite protein toxin called anthrax toxin. Anthrax toxin is a mixture of three protein components, protective antigen, edema factor, and lethal factor. PA plus LF produces lethal toxin, and PA plus F produces edema toxin. These toxins cause death and tissue swelling, respectively. To enter the cells, the edema and lethal factors use another protein produced by B. anthracis called protective antigen, which binds to two surface receptors on the host cell. A cell protease then cleaves PA into two fragments, PA20 and PA63. PA20 dissociates into the extracellular medium, playing no further role in the toxic cycle. PA63 then oligomerizes, with six other PA63 fragments forming a heptameric ring-shaped structure named a prepore. Once in this shape, the complex can competitively bind up to three Fs or LFs, forming a resistant complex. Receptor-mediated endocytosis occurs next, providing the newly formed toxic complex access to the interior of the host cell. The acidified environment within the endosome triggers the heptama to release the LF and or F into the cytosol. It is unknown how exactly the complex results in the death of the cell. Edema factor is a carmodule independent adenylate cyclus. Adenylate cyclus catalyzes the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP and pyrophosphate. The complexation of adenylate cyclus with carmodulin removes carmodulin from stimulating calcium triggered signaling, thus inhibiting the immune response. To be specific, LF inactivates neutrophils by the process just described so they cannot phagocytose bacteria. Throughout history, lethal factor was presumed to cause macrophages to make TNF-alpha and interleukin-1, beta. TNF-alpha is a cytokine whose primary role is to regulate immune cells, as well as to induce inflammation and apoptosis or programmed cell death. Interleukin-1, beta is another cytokine that also regulates inflammation and apoptosis. The overproduction of TNF-alpha and IL-1B ultimately leads to septic shock and death. However, recent evidence indicates anthrax also targets endothelial cells that line serous cavities such as the pericardial cavity, pleural cavity, and peritoneal cavity, lymph vessels, and blood vessels, causing vascular leakage of fluid and cells, and ultimately hypovolemic shock and septic shock. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?